Hi everyone, it's Rob at Legion Studios and welcome back for part four of the Battle of the Bulge table build. So today um, what our plans are is to um, get sand onto the, um, onto the board and I also want to show how to use some of the different types of sand. I have a playground sand which is real fine and just an all-purpose sand that has a little bit uh, larger pieces of gravel in it. So I'm going to show where to use those for gameplay and how it affects uh, you know, the board um, with use and uh, and how to apply that using the wood glue and using some, some techniques with the brush to uh, to make that a better process so you don't see brush strokes because um, ultimately you want to think about each stage on how it affects the next stage so if you have a lot of uh, weird sort of where the way the sand goes down it's going to make um, when you paint it more difficult so I try to try to do things in the in the doing the, during the process to uh, to ease the next steps um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to try to um, get some paint on this so I'm going to paint the roads and uh, that should cover part four so the table is really coming along I'm really excited to get this thing finished so we can get out and uh, our players here at the store um, as you know I own Legion's Hobbies and Games here in Pittsburgh and uh, I know everybody is really excited about uh, about playing this uh, for our dens so uh, we look forward to it and uh, ready to roll Okay, for the first step, what we're going to do is we're going to put sand on the table, um, and I use the uh, Type Bond 2 again, the wood glue. Now I mix it, I thin it a little bit with some water. So what we're going to do is, uh, in the bowl I have a little bit of water, and we're just going to uh, put, you know, a little bit of the, of the enough, enough of the Type Bond to uh, cover the table. And uh, this is going to be a little thicker than, than consistency of milk, um, but just, uh, you know, it, it's tough to say. I don't want it to be too thin because I want the sand to really grip really well. So, um, you know, get that in and then just, uh, you know, mix it up really good. Okay, so now we're going to uh, put the, um, the tight bond mixed with water onto the board. Now, you just don't want to brush this on. You actually want to um, do a stipling motion to, um, to kind of get it in. That way it doesn't leave any brush strokes. And it also gets down into a lot of the texture on the table. Um, so it doesn't just hit the surface and it kind of creates irregular patterns. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to, um, you know, to brush this on um, again using a stipling motion. Um, and uh, I'll see you when we get finished. Now for this part, what we're going to do is um, I want to keep any of the sand off the roads. So we want to be very careful on the edges just to use a smaller brush and just again using a stipling motion, just get some of the glue um, down in the cracks around the road edge. And um, you know, just again trying to be careful not to get any um, of the glue on the road. So I'm going to continue on with this. Okay, here's the glue uh, applied on most of the table and the road edges. I'm going to go ahead and get some sand down because I don't want this to set up too much or it's not going to get a good hold with the sand. So um, we're going to go ahead and mix up some sand. I'm going to show you some of the differences and uh, let's go ahead and get some sand on this half of the table. Okay, there's two sands I use. The first is an all-purpose sand. Now this sand is, um, this sand is a little more coarse. Um, I do mix them together. Um, so areas that, uh, that aren't going to have as much modular terrain, like areas along the edge of the road or at the bottoms of hills, is going to have more of the course. And then the areas on top of the table um, where you're going to get a lot of the, um, the modular terrain and everything, I'm going to add more of the fine sand um, to the mix and uh, be using it in that area. So we're going to go ahead and uh, mix up our coarse with our fine, uh, mostly coarse here, and we're going to get it around the edges and go ahead and get this stuff on the table. Okay, so as I said, the coarse, um, the coarse sand mix we're going to put on the edges. Um, I'm also going to cover on the bottoms of the hills, um, the foothills area. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to avoid getting too much of this coarse area onto the, um, the flat areas where a lot of the modular terrain is going to sit. And we want to put a lot of this coarse sand around the edges of the, um, of the road. Um, and because there's no glue on the road, um, this will just sweep up so it won't be a problem. So we're going to continue to get a lot of this around the edge and I'll be back when this is finished. Okay, so now we've added some of the uh, playground stand to the uh, coarse mix that we already had. And so it's a lot more finer mixture in there. There's very few gravels, but there's enough of the, of the smaller gravels to still give some texture. And we're just going to cover the whole table now. Um, you can be a little liberal on this. I mean, you know, you don't, it's, we're just going to sweep it off and I'm actually going to tilt the table up sideways once it dries and, uh, and then run a shop vac on it. But let's just go ahead and get the whole uh, table covered and I'll be back when this is finished. OK, 
Okay, I want to just lift the table up and get a lot of the loose sand off. Um, the glue is still a little tacky. Um, I don't want it drying in some heavy clumps. And I don't mind a few bare areas showing. So I want to get this off of here and, um, and then we're going to let the table dry. And actually before it totally dries, I'm also going to take an old chip brush and I actually want to get a lot of the loose heavy gravel that I don't really want on the table. Um, we'll just, it's kind of sticking on there, especially on the flat areas where the gameplay is going to go. Um, you know, the more we get off now, it's going to be easier than um, trying to get it off of there when the glue starts to tack. And you don't want to use too much of a scrubbing motion on this. Just lightly brush and get a lot of the loose pieces that you really don't want on the table off at this point. Um, again, this is one of those things where if you do these steps early, um, it's a lot easier to do them now than later. Okay, so our table's dry, and uh, the one thing now I want to do is I want to get the shop back and uh, clean up a lot of the um, a lot of the loose sand. So I'm going to get the shop back out, and we're going to vacuum up a lot of the uh, the loose sand that, and see what areas didn't uh, didn't adhere to the table, and then we're going to fix that in the next step. Okay, so there ended up being a few areas that I wanted to get a little more sand on. Um, so I just pretty much just mixed up mostly a fine mix, and I'm applying some uh, some glue on there, and we're just going to get some additional sand on the table. Okay, now that the sand is dry, um, and you know the road's been cleared off. What we're going to do is we're going to start to um, we're going to start to paint the road. So I'm going to start with a um, like a raw umber, a burnt umber, um, a, just any sort of dark brown to work. I use craft paints, um, you know, for the most part for some of these terrain features. For the table itself, I actually take paint pots, uh, Vallejos and Games Workshop paints that I use a lot on the tables, and I I go to paint stores and get either samples made, and my browns and my blacks and my grays I actually get gallons because we use so much of it so it's uh, it's just more economical to do that way um, I actually need more of this burnt umber I need to pick up some more of this craft paint but this craft paint there's so many there's such a, a big range of colors it's just nice to be able to use um, you know for uh, for roads and terrain features this stuff would never touch one of my miniatures but for this it's it's really great so we're gonna mix a little bit of black with this though because I want to start building this road up I want the road to have some nice contrast with the brightness of the snow so I'm actually gonna bring this road up and put some highlights and actually take a little more time than I normally would on a terrain feature to really make this pop um, and then when it's finished I, I think there's some spots in here that I can see that I'm gonna add some uh, some resin too and uh, do a few mud puddles and some uh, really shiny muddy frozen muddy areas so uh, I'm gonna get started putting the first coat again it's just gonna be any sort of dark brown I'm gonna start with a mix with a black and then I'm gonna go right to this raw umber over top of it and get those first layers and see how it looks so I'm gonna get started on this and I'll see you when I come back Okay, so I have the, um, the roads, um, have some brown on the roads, some dark brown mixed with black. Um, now, in case you're wondering, I know I still have to paint the hills black. Um, I like to start, again, dark as possible to bring it up. It just, um, it's just, I, in my, I just believe that that's the right way to paint. Um, is start dark and move your way up. Um, even when I paint miniatures, I prime black most of the time. So the reason I did the roads first is I used a pretty heavy, um, you know, thin the paints pretty heavy just to get a lot more coverage on the brown and I want to let that dry and, uh, and the roads were already black anyway from the rubber undercoating that I used but for the um, for the hills now I'm just going to use black primer house paint uh, latex and I'm going to get a nice coat over the whole table uh, so we can let everything dry together and then I'm going to come in and start bringing up the browns here and more um, lighter browns on the road um, and start getting uh, you know some nice highlights and start getting the earth effects um, again, I like to do the total earth effects even on a snow table, um, just again because there's a lot more, it gives a lot more interesting features when you still see earth showing through the, the, the snow rather than just like a whole tundra fill. So uh, I do the whole table as I would if this was just an earth table and then I just bought, um, you know, do mud and snow and tufts and, and you'll see in the future videos. But I'm going to go ahead and get this, uh, get this br uh, black one here. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so we have the black, um, the paint is all dry on the hills, and the roads have the first coat of the dark brown. 
So my next step is um, I'm going to leave the roads um, the way they are for now, and I'm going to continue to uh, to get the um, the hills all highlighted with brown. So I'm going to start with a. Um, it's actually based on a Gaines Workshop uh, color called charred brown, which is going to be about the same of a, maybe a chocolate brown um, from Vallejo, but it's a mix that I had a. Um, a paint store uh, do up. We use this color a lot, so again, I just use a whole gallon. But again, any dark brown, um, your typical earth tones, um, just get them on there, and uh, and then we bring it up. I can. Um, uh, I, we have a recipe I use on all my tables so that everything matches the uh, modular terrain, and uh, I just follow that for all the earth tone uh, colors. So the hills and everything are all consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and get the brown on here, and I'll see you when I get back. So one thing before I put too much paint on here, I wanted to show you a little bit about what type, how you use the brush strokes. Um, you don't want to go too, um, too heavy on this with these colors. Um, I mean, the brown's obviously going to be, um, next to the black, is going to be the heavier of the colors, but I still like a little bit of the black to show through to help give some depth. Not a lot, but I, so you just kind of stay loose holding the brush lightly and just do sort of... Um, you know, a wet brush on it, which is equivalent to like what they'd say a, a dry brush, um, except just a little more paint and just get some coverage. Um, you know, it, it's easy to fix any mistakes you might have at this point, but you definitely want to, um, you know, just stay fairly loose with it. So just let the blush brush do most, most of the work going back and forth. If you find some areas that, that need more coverage, you can always go back and, and add it once it, uh, once it dries. So I'm just going to kind of get some brown on here and I will be back. Okay, here's our first coat of the brown. Um, just ignore the lighter areas. It's still not dry yet, so it's going to show a little lighter. But this is the first coat and we're going to start adding the other colors. Okay, this color is actually a flat brown. Uh, it's actually Morfang Brown from Citadel mixed up in a paint can at a local paint shop. shop. And uh, what I'm going to do is you want to stay a little lighter with the brush strokes. Um, this is like a, uh, it's a highlight. It's not quite a dry brush. I mean, I still want the paintbrush to be wet. Um, it's just, um, you're just going to get good coverage over top of this uh, brown that's below it. It just, it starts to build real good character of the uh, terrain. Now, I, I want to, like I said before, I want to really show a lot of earth tones under this table and then add the snow on top. So, um, you know, we're going to continue with multiple highlights, the same as I would if I was just making this a green grass table. Um, it's still going to, even though it's going to be covered with snow, I still want to have the earth tones below it. It just gives it a lot more character. So we're going to continue. Okay, all my earth tones on my tables and my triads, um, actually I use four colors, but um, it's sort of a yellow. It's, it's actually based on a bubonic brown, which is from games, an older Games Workshop color, and that's what I had mixed up. You could also use a yellow okra from Vallejo if you wanted to have paints mixed up, but I like the, the way the yellow kind of ties the two browns together um, and creates a nice, um, it actually gives it a nice tannish color when you're, when you're getting it on there. So, um, so that's what we're doing now is we're just, and this, you want to stay very light with the brush. Um, you want to avoid any, um, you know, any brush strokes, um, and any streaks. So, so get as much of the paint off as possible and, uh, we're going to continue on with this. So we have the yellow tone down over top of the, um, the reddish brown, which goes over top of the dark brown, and it has a nice tone here. Now I want to just put some khaki. Um, you could use khaki, um, any sort of, I, I base this on um, Vallejo khaki. You could use, um, it, again, it's paint cans. Um, that are mixed up from the bottles at like a Lowe's or any sort of uh, hardware store that can do paint matching. Um, it's super cheap to do that way. I just got a quart. This lasts me a long time because it's a highlight color. And now this one you want to go as light as possible. You don't want any sort of, you, when I mean light, I mean just stay a very loose, um, a loose brush on there. You don't want to go too hard because you're going to put a, you're going to leave a streak and it's going to, it's going to really show. This is just to catch the stones that are showing on top. Um, so you're just going to kind of just sort of very lightly just kind of give some highlight to this color. Now, again, most of this is going to get covered with snow, so I'm not going to worry too much if I do make a mistake and actually get a brush mark over. Um, normally, if it's a table that I'm just doing as an earth tone and leaving it without snow on top, I'm going to, um, 
I'm going to take more time to fix any of those mistakes. But um, that's the nice thing about terrain building is if you do make a mistake, there's always a, a way to fix it with either covering it with flock or um, just carving it away and redoing it or repainting it. Um, it's a lot easier to do than on a miniature. That's what's nice about uh, World War II wargaming is, uh, you know, even if you're painting a tank and there's a flaw in the miniature resin wise or even painting, uh, bail damage is always a way to uh, resolve that. But anyway, I'm going to keep going with this and, um, and get this highlights on and I'll show you when I'm finished. So we have the khaki down. Now I've decided to, um, to go in in just a few areas and I, I have some Iraqi sand that I use on one of my desert tables and it's just a nice southern neutral yellowish tan tone. Um, Iraqi sand is a Vallejo color and again I just mix these up, have taken them to a store and have them mixed. So you can see the, the shade here. I'm just going to kind of go through um, some areas and just kind of give it a little bit of just a, a spot highlight on some of the edges. Um, I know it's a little darker than the um, than the, the khaki that we just put down, but it also blends in everything um, pretty nicely. And again, I know that a lot of this is going to get covered with snow, but I just firmly believe that it's important. The more you can put um, down uh, when you go to cover this with snow and you're leaving patches like I plan to do, um, it's just a really nice effect with what's showing through. So I just want to kind of just very, very lightly hit the edges a little bit. Um, this isn't a full coverage thing and, um, and just kind of give a little bit of this color just to build some character on the table, some additional character. So I'm going to continue to do that and then that should wrap up the, uh, you know, getting the paint on the hills and uh, I'll be right back. So I'm considering this top area finished now, um, at least till we start putting flock and, and uh, other sort of um, effects on there. Um, but now I'm going to just quickly get some additional washes on the, um, on the roads. Now I'm going to go in first with that dark brown. I'm just going to use, um, this is a charred brown, burnt umber, whatever. It's just a dark brown. I want to go in and touch up some of the places that I got some of the colors on this, on the, um, on the earth here um, onto the road a little bit while I was doing some of the, uh, the dry brushing. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to mix a, this is a game color, um, you know, it's the equivalent of maybe a German camo medium brown from Vallejo or a um, graveyard earth from Citadel, one of their old colors. Um, this is called Terra Earth. I'm going to mix it to start with with this charred brown. Um, or this dark brown, and I'm going to um, thin it pretty heavily with water. Uh, I think normally I'm going to I would use an airbrush on these roads, but uh, I know a lot of you don't have an airbrush or don't use it. If you do, you certainly could. You know, you'd be good enough at that point, I'm sure, with your airbrush to be able to get some nice road effects on there, which is what I would do. But I'm going to use some washes because I don't want I don't really want hard um, paint washes, not ink washes. But I'm going to mix up uh, thinned um, paints and just let them dry. When, and let the, uh, the way the joint compound has created some textures on here, let that kind of work out because there's also going to be some snow on here. And then I'll go in a little bit um, in some areas um, and do some spot painting to kind of bring up the elements that are still showing um, when, on, the, on the next video in the second phase. But um, for now, I'm just going to get a couple uh, washes on here and let those roads dry. And that'll bring us to the end of, uh, of part four. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you what this looks like when it's finished. Here's our first two browns. It's a uh, Terra Earth and a Charred Brown. Uh, really two any mid-tone browns are going to work. And we're just going to thin them with water um, fairly heavily because like I said, I'm doing a wash on these. I don't really want to um, have too much paint showing. I want it to be subtle and, uh, and bring it up that way. So we're going to go ahead and mix this up uh, fairly thin and start brushing it on. One thing I want to do is just make sure I spread this out and don't let it pull too much. So just, um, just really just kind of spread it and uh, keep the brush moving. Now we're going to just add the second, the lighter of the browns, which is actually a graveyard earth or, um, you know, 
it could even be German Camo Media Brown. Um, I'm using them right out of the Vallejo bottles because I don't need much because it's mostly thin with water. And we're going to do the same thing. Um, you know, I'm going to thin it with water and we're going to continue to, uh, to spread this out on the table or on the roads. Okay, here's the uh, here's the roads with the first two colors of the browns, um, you know, on it. We're gonna let this dry, and uh, I have one more color I want to add on there. All right, so we have this drying, and actually, while it's drying, it really. Um, it gives me an idea that I haven't tried before, um, uh, which is probably pretty good for this table because it's a snow table, um, which would be a very wet, muddy road. So I'm actually going to let this dry um, and I'm going to apply a couple more colors first, but I think I'm going to give it a coat of like, I don't really want to go with a gloss, but I think I'm going to go with a satin um, varnish. I'm going to actually spray a uh, satin varnish on here just to give it a little bit of a, of a shine, um, to give it a little bit of a wet look. I think that'll be, um, be a nice effect on this. Um, just because it would be, the snow would constantly be creating, you know, the mud. Um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do apply one more wash and see how it looks. Um, really, the idea with this is, is just to get a lot of different browns. Um, this is sort of a darkish green. It's called Dark Mud from uh, Panzer Aces. I've used it before thinned on a um, 40K table we did, and it looked really good when it dried. So I'm just going to spot, um, put some of this dark mud in. Um, I'm really focusing also on the edges of the, of the uh, roads and letting it kind of pull in there somewhere you get some drainage off the road, off the hills um, and into the roads. And uh, again, the idea is just to get a lot of browns in here, let them dry. And uh, I am going to test the satin varnish first, but I think that might actually give it a nice, uh, a nice look, especially in some of the, maybe not completely on the roads, but just in some spot areas. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're also going to go, um, there's some pits in here that I left that we're going to pour a little bit of a uh, polyurethane resin um, used for countertops into mixed with a little bit of ink and create, um, you know, some mud puddles. Um, but that'll be on a future video um, as I complete the roads. But right now I'm going to go ahead and thin this uh, Panzer Aces up, dark mud, number 316. And I'm just going to carefully apply it in certain areas, not a complete coverage, just to give some uh, character. So we're almost at the end of episode four and um, you, the table is really coming along well, I think. Um, it's starting to really shape out how I expected um, it to look at this point. Um, we have the roads, um, you know, some nice two or three layers on the roads. Um, this, the brown scenics on top of the, of the you know, hills are complete. So what we're gonna be doing in episode five is we're gonna continue a little more um, muddy textures and some other features in the road. And we're gonna start using some scenics and putting, um, you know, flock, um, a different sort of grass, things like that are going to show up through the snow um, on episode um, episode five. Um, so again, some additional terrain features. Again, I want to thank you for sticking with me through this uh, table build. Um, we're getting close. Um, I mean, there's still a lot to do. I don't know how many episodes it's going to take, but. Um, you know, we're going to get it done very quickly here. So again, thank you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you like it and uh, feel free to leave comments below. Um, I look forward to seeing you in episode five and uh, thanks guys.